Typecasting is a simple storytelling technique. It's a way to convey something you are inherently supposed to know about a character without them having to explicitly tell you in a scene. Whether you're an actress or not, knowing how you appear to others before you even open your mouth can be used to your advantage. In this video, I'm going to break down the seven face types, the roles they often get cast in, and how you can use this to inspire outfits that you wear on a daily basis. My name is Ellie Jean, I'm a style consultant, and on this channel, we find our style by finding ourselves. Dramatics. Dramatics have long and sharp facial features with features such as taut cheekbones, almond lips, almond eyes, sharp and narrow jawlines. They tend to look intimidating, dangerous and powerful. So the roles they might be cast in include villain, the intimidating boss, a powerful queen, the strict mother, a witch, a politician, a rebel leader, the femme fatale or the bombshell, sometimes even the mean girl. As you can see, some of these are positive, some of these are negative, and that will go all the way through this list. For for example, Cersei Lannister as the powerful queen in Game of Thrones. The White Witch in Narnia, again, is kind of like a powerful queen figure and also a witch figure. Meryl Streep as Margaret Thatcher, playing the powerful politician. And again, Meryl Streep in The Devil Wears Prada as the intimidating boss. Or the Countess of Grantham in Downton Abbey as this strict motherly role. Soft cosplaying these roles is a really great way to explore your essence and the different things you can do. So do I recommend buying a powerful queen costume from the shop? Where that around? Absolutely not. But breaking down some of the costumes from these roles into their elements, so you can then incorporate some of these into your day-to-day -day outfit to channel the energy of some of these roles and at the same time hit those dramatic essence elements. So for the dramatic, if you were going to cosplay a spy, you might incorporate a leather jacket, leather trousers, stilettos, or chunky black boots, black sunglasses and a red lip, a long trench coat, a dark turtleneck, or a dark blazer. See how many of these things are really structured, long, straight, Bold. The natural's typical appearance is long and blunt facial features, so they have kind of more angularity than sharpness. And the vibe they typically have is a down-to-earth, grounded, relaxed, athletic or sporty feel. So roles they often get cast in include the girl next door, an action heroine, the every woman, the athlete, popular girl, experimental artists, bohemian hippie types, outdoor adventurers and down-to-earth parents. For example, Katniss Everdeen in The Hunger Games as our action heroine. Sarah Connor, again, a very action heroine in The Terminator, or Vivian Ward in Pretty Woman as your kind of every woman. So if we look at an adventurer outfit, this might include cargo pants, khaki colors, linen shirts, tan belt, leather bracelet, chunky sandals, a worn leather backpack, braided hair, or brown leather boots. Now, of course, all together, this begins to feel a little costumey, but if you take these elements bit by bit and incorporate them into your outfits, it will feel very natural. The gamine, their typical appearance is contrasted facial features, and they tend to have a mix of sharp and soft facial features. So their kind of stereotype is large round eyes, but they often have almond eyes or just like a mix of different things going on. Their vibe is typically cheeky, playful, boyish, or unusual. Roles they are often cast in include the adventurous teenager, the quirky friend, the futuristic heroine, a pixie or a chaotic artist. For example, Esther Shapiro in Orthodox is the adventurous teenager. She's trying to break out of the role that she's been given. I think she's actually in her 20s, but she fits that kind of archetype. Holly Golightly in Breakfast at Tiffany's is the quirky friend. Nancy Wheeler in Stranger Things, again, is that adventurous teenager. Or Luna Lovegood in Harry Potter, again, playing the quirky friend. So let's look at the futuristic hero. They might wear metallic trousers, an a symmetric top, a cropped top or cropped elements, sculpted shoulder pads, neon colors, plastic or clear accessories, white trainers or mesh, whether in skirts, tops, and so on. See how these elements have that very quirky, cheeky feel. Classics have even, balanced, and moderate facial features. They tend to have a timeless, graceful feel. I don't know if you saw the discourse on TikTok about British versus American faces. Like lots of people say Elle Fanning looks quite British when she isn't. Rachel McAdams as well. And I think it's that classic essence. I think a lot of people tend to think of British actresses as having that kind of classic um, look to them. So the roles they might be cast in include members of royalty, Roman goddess, the healthy love interest, a loyal friend, anyone in a period drama, they often play the reliable mother, or the unexpected genius. And what I mean by that is, for example, Wendy Bird in Ozark. So she is the classic loyal mum. She's got a very classic face type, but that is used as a reason for the audience to not expect these things from her. Her character is something very opposite. And I think that can be said for some of the ingenues and gamines as well, that their youthful innocence is kind of used to lead the audience one way 
way and actually the character's gonna go in this huge twist. Other examples are Harriet in Emma playing the loyal friend and Mary in About Time playing the loyal love interest. So let's look at one of those examples, the Roman goddess. They might wear a white dress, have a cowl neck, one of those draped, really delicate kind of necklines, a gold chain belt, simple leather sandals, gold earrings, a silk midi skirt, or a cotton shawl. Ingenues. Ingenues typically have small, delicate, round features, and this gives them a youthful, sweet, innocent appearance. The roles they might be cast in include the sweet teenager, the victim, a fairy, the loving mother, an innocent girl in the big city, or the good-hearted friend. For example, Karen in Mean Girls being the good-hearted friend, Penelope in Bridgerton kind of being the innocent girl, the loyal friend, the one who's treated as the young friend who isn't really a part of things, Sleeping Beauty in Maleficent just as that very young, sweet teenager, Ariel in The Little Mermaid being the innocent girl in the big city, or the peasant girl, perhaps a young princess. So if we look at the peasant girl, they might incorporate a frilly blouse, much like this one, a lace-up corset, braided hair, a flared princessy skirt, ballet shoes, a headscarf, heeled brogues, or a ruffled sleeve. I myself am soft cosplaying my ingenue by being the princess. Uh, I got this at a YouTube party <laughs> last year. It gave me a very cute vibe, and I will say it's making me feel very powerful to wear it. I think I'm going to wear this all evening. The romantic's typical appearance is soft and rounded, but larger features than an ingenue. They tend to be more lush. Their vibe is sensual, glamorous, and soft. And roles they might be cast in include the Bond girl, a seductress, a fiery or passionate woman, again, a powerful queen all the way on the opposite end of the yin and yang scale, or a romantic love interest. For example, Kate Winslet in Titanic as the romantic love interest, Daenerys in Game of Thrones as this fiery woman, and again, Amy Pond in Doctor Who as a very fiery woman, and almost anything Salma Hayek plays as that kind of passionate seductress. So if we look at the romantic love interest, they might wear a red dress, a large rose pattern, a red lip, a diamond necklace, a sweetheart neckline, an off-shoulder blouse, a polka dot pencil skirt, a floral hairpiece, or oversized earrings. You see how this feels so different to the ingenue already just by characterizing that role. The ethereal typically has long and soft facial features. So think of an oval face shape rather than a rectangular one. They'll often have a mix of slightly straight but soft features. So they could have round eyes, they could have almond eyes. They usually have high yet somewhat soft cheekbones. Their vibe is otherworldly celestial angelic. So they might be cast as an angel, an uncanny creature like artificial intelligence, a ghost, an alien, a wise grandmother, a fortune teller, or a wise teacher. For example, Yvain in Stardust as this angelic figure. She's technically a star, but she's obviously a celestial creature. Sandy in Last Night in Soho is played by Anya Taylor-Joy. She is, she plays a ghost. Galadriel in Lord of the Rings as an elf, which that context of Lord of the Rings is a very angelic, otherworldly, mature, wise creature. So if you were going to play an angel, you might wear a feather top, a long white skirt, a silk cardigan, a moon belt, a pleated metallic skirt, a white blouse, or a long pearl necklace. And in terms of the wise teacher and what we're saying about subverting those expectations, I would say Lisa Kudrow has a lot of ethereal and she plays a role in Easy A of the wise teacher. And I don't want to spoil it, but she really subverts that role. She really, she goes against her responsibilities in a big, big way and lets Olive, the main character, down. So you've kind of got the expectations there through her appearance and then that's subverted in a way that you are shocked the same as the character. By simply turning the essences into different characters, you can explore the range of that essence and also also, find ways to turn this into practical advice that you can use in your own wardrobe. I really recommend that you go and watch some of your favorite TV shows and films and see if the people playing these different roles have these essences, and if not, does it still work? Why might it work? Why doesn't it work? Are they trying to subvert your expectations? I really hope you've enjoyed this video. If you have, you will enjoy my video on the seven face types um, with real people. So I remade an old video recently where I explained the seven face types, but I replaced all the examples with real people. So that should be really insightful for you if you've enjoyed this. There is an article in the description all about this topic that I wrote on Substack. I have a newsletter and community on Substack called Style Scholars. There is a free and paid version. If you enjoy any of my videos, it is only five pounds a month to support everything I create here. I very rarely have sponsorships and this is a perfect way to support my work. And also every week, whether you subscribe or not, you get a free newsletter and subscribers get extra content, including a live stream with me every Wednesday. Thank you so much for watching. I will see you next time.